One of the most epic moments of Mashoko Tensei season one was easily turning point two. The point in which Rudeus comes face to face with number two of the seven great powers, Orsted, the dragon god. But what anime only viewers might not know is that Rudeus actually faced one of the seven great powers before this. Well, probably the most understandable of the skip content, Extra Chapter Dragon Meat Nanahoshi style is an interesting look at how close Rudeus got to death without realizing it. Welcome back to our weekly look at the Mushoku Tensei Java's Reincarnation novel series, geared towards anime only is to see content that was skipped by the anime, enhancing your knowledge of the characters and the stories of the series without going beyond what the anime has adapted. Before we begin, let's get a little context refresher out of the way that will be important. While Rudeus is traveling through the mill's continent with Rajerd, Edis, and Geese, they stop at an interesting monument on the roadside. The monument had a single character inscribed upon it with seven motifs surrounding it. Rudeus was pretty sure the character was the word seven in fighting god tongue. The patterns he figured he'd seen before. Asking Geese what it was, he nodded and stated that it was the seven great powers. The story went that when the second great human demon war ended, a person known as the Technique God came up with that name. At the time, the Technique God was considered one of the strongest people in the world. They selected seven people, including himself, and declared those the strongest in the world. The monument was a way of immortalizing who those people were. Asking Rajerd for more information, he mentioned that when he was young, he trained hard so that one day he could become a student of one of the seven great powers. He went on to explain that each of the motifs was for each individual. In order of their hierarchy, number seven, North God. Number six, Sword God. Number five, Death God. Number four, Demon God. Number three, Fighting God. Number two, Dragon God. And number one, Technique God. While Rudeus had never heard of the seven great powers before, Rajerd answered that it was a title well known until the Laplace War. The war itself brought about great change and half of the great powers went missing. With exception of the Technique God, the seven great powers all participated in Laplace's war. Among them, three were killed, one went missing, and another one was sealed away. The only one that made it out in one piece at that time was the Dragon God. After several hundred years, with those at the bottom swapping spots for the strongest, the phrase fell out of use. Currently, the Demon God was sealed away, while the Technique, Dragon, and Fighting God were all missing. With many missing, it wasn't much of a ranking system to confirm the strongest. And since the Demon God wasn't technically dead, they weren't removed from the ranking. Rajerd honestly didn't know how many of them were still alive and mentioned that even 400 years ago, people doubted the Technique God even existed. But many claimed that the Technique God created the list so they can find people capable of defeating them. According to something that Geese once heard, the monument itself changes the rankings automatically using magic. That all said, Rudeus was intrigued to learn of the seven great powers. He already thought the world was filled with enough ridiculously strong people, but it looked like he really wasn't gonna keep up with the best of them. Not that he was aiming to be the strongest of the world. Jumping forward, Rudeus will leave this mill's continent and arrive at the city of Eastport in the Dragon King realm. And this is where we get into one of the skipped chapters of the anime adaptation. And yes, Ruiz's close encounter with death. Extra chapter, Dragon Meat, Nanahoshi style. Eastport was the biggest port city in the world. People spoke the same language as those in the holy country of Millis, but names and appearances of shops was subtly different. As they set off to find an inn, Edis murmured about something smelling good. Ruiz knew what she meant. Something smelled of a tempting aroma. Following the scent to a restaurant, it had brick walls and it was in terrible shape with holes. The sign was weathered and it was impossible to read. It was more like an abandoned house than a fine dining establishment. Rajerd asked Rudeus if they wanted to go inside. Over their travels, Rajerd pounded in his head that, you know, to pick a place based on its visual appearance, which made sense because on the demon continent, typically an establishment that looked terrible, the food was really bad as well. But Rudeus told Rajerd that a change of pace can't hurt. As they went in, the door protested loudly. It was clean enough, but the furniture was in shambles, holes in the walls and the floor. The place was totally empty, even though it was lunchtime. Rudy should be hesitant, but the anticipation was stronger. After they sat down, a man approached, skeleton thin. He couldn't even strike a smile. Business wasn't booming, but Rudy thought the guy could at least slap on a smile. At this point, Rajerd asked Rudius if he wanted to reconsider. <laughs> he had never second guessed Rudius before, but Rudius assured him that the food might actually be delicious. Smiling awkwardly, the man handed them a menu that had two items on it, dragon meat and a Hoshi style, and Alba fish stew. On Milshin, typically most menus would offer 10 items at least, but it was cheap. Alba fish was a species that was native to the seas down in the south. It was a standard part of people's diets in these parts. Rius ended up having some at Westport, and it typically came with some sort of vegetable soup. Supposedly, it was a very common dish in the Dragon King realm. As for dragon meat Nanahoshi style, Rius never heard of it before. 
he knew that king dragons resided in the nearby mountain range, and that's where it took its name from. These dragons were apparently capable of manipulating gravity. Was it actually meat from them? Or maybe it tasted similar? And what did Nanahoshi even mean? It sounded almost Japanese. Now, he wasn't like an expert in cuisines of this world. Maybe it was a popular cooking method in the Dragon King realm. After looking at the menus, they all chose their meat. The guy left to the kitchen expressionless. No water was provided, but nothing was free in this world. Maurice ended up making cups with earth magic and filled them with water for everyone. He even added ice. Edis quickly consumed hers and then asked for a refill. He did it for her, even though typically he would tell her to cast it herself. But inside of a restaurant, he didn't want to risk her flooding the place. Reserta, on the other hand, sipped slowly. He was a fast eater, but he was slow with beverages. At this point, Reese went over their current plans. There wasn't much information here, and he wanted to look at the swords a little bit longer, but he felt it was best to move on to the next city. As they were walking, Edis was even looking at the swords on display, but they were blunt garbage for beginners. It took Edis a while to realize her fighting skills had come a long way, but she wasn't good at telling quality in swords at a glance. At some point, Rius heard a loud bang. A thuggish looking man stomped his way into the restaurant without taking off his shoes. Not that anyone did in this world, that was really from his old world. The man addressed the restaurant owner. Hey there, Randolph. You finally in the mood to make the right decision today? My answer isn't gonna change no matter how many times you ask. Would you just leave, please? How long are you gonna keep this empty wreck of a place running, man? Until I die, of course. It's been in my family for generations. Reese assumed the restaurant was just struggling to survive. They had some loans out there and maybe this thug was coming here to buy up the land cheap. Wait out there a while, at least. I have customers, a rare sight. I won't give up on this place as long as I have a single customer. It sounded like rough times. If the food was good enough, maybe he could spread the word about the place a little. It's like Rudy's always trying to help people out. Edison spoke up. That man is looking at us. Reese covered her eyes. This problem needed to be resolved by power of the food, not by the fists. She then squeezed his wrists and he cried out inside. While Ruiz was playing with Edis, eventually the food emerged from the kitchen. Ruiz's eyes went wide at the sight of it. No way. The dragon meat Nanahoshi style consisted of three parts. First was a transparent vegetable soup, a simple refreshing flavor. Second was white rice, the emperor of all grain. Wait, the color wasn't right. It seemed to have other grains mixed in but he explained why the smell was so nostalgic here. The third thing was golden brown chunks of deep fried goodness. Without a doubt, it was karage. It was a classic karage meal. Rius shouted out, I can't believe it. Edis asked what was wrong with him, which was an understandable reaction as he was trembling and clutching the table with both hands. Ugh, oh, it's nothing. Now, obviously at this point, anime only viewers that yes, have obviously gotten to the second season, you might start drawing some conclusions here. And this idea that Nanahoshi, who's been traveling around with Orsted, that Rudis eventually meets at the University of Magic, has been hinting at people Japanese-style food. Which would explain why this guy calls it Nanahoshi-style. It could be something that she had the guy make. Rudis never dreamed that Japanese-style food existed in this world. He thought maybe the manga was finally starting to understand what he wanted in life. Shoveling the food into his mouth, tears rolled down his cheeks. In his previous life, passion for rice knew no bounds. He gobbled a gallon of it every single day. The rice he was having now was lousy compared to it. It wouldn't even earn a C in Japanese taste rankings, but it was still rice. Honest to goodness rice. Today, Ruiz understood that all rice was created equal. Saving some of that rice, he moved onto the meat. It was wet, oily, and inside was dry and tough. The more he chewed, the stronger its rancid odor grew. It was making Ruiz nauseous. He thought, they expected me to eat the rice with this? He could eat the rice by itself, unlimited amounts, as long as it had little bits of salt in it. Rudius, at this point, couldn't contain his anger. The karage was an insult to rice itself. He stood up. I want to see the chef right now. The owner came out, and Rudius started with his compliments. The pseudo miso was passable. Simple, clear, salty vegetable soup, complemented with multi-grain rice. They felt like a complete meal in themselves. Only a skilled artesian could pull that off. He used the right amount of water and heat for the rice. If he paid attention more to the quality of the water that he used, it would have been a perfect score. Rudius was even perfectly willing to offer up his own delicious Rudius branded H2O. The stuff was better than what was sitting in your backyard. The problem was the karage, or rather Nanahoshi style dragon meat. He shredded it out thoroughly and brutally. The stuff wasn't fit for human consumption. How dare he serve it to a customer? Did he have any idea who Rudius was? He was Rudius Grey Rat of Dead End. He'd pay dearly for this insult. Long story short, he flipped out on the guy, like a psychotic celebrity chef in a foul mood. Yes, we're pretty much getting Rudius Ramsey here. <laughs> you idiot sandwich. In retrospect, Rudius wasn't sure why he got so angry. Maybe because he was still hungry. Edis and Reserve thought that he lost his mind. 
By the end, they dragged Rudius out, kicking and screaming. Honestly, he had went too far. His love for Rice had gotten the better of him. It was enough to justify some things that were said. He was still an amateur himself. This world didn't have ingredients that were available in Japan. Even the oil was of lower quality. Still today, Rudius learned that people in this world ate rice as a side dish. And that deep frying was a thing. He should be happy. Why was he so furious? By the time he left, the owner Randolph was in tears. Rudius had definitely been a childish jerk. Do better next time, Rudius. We then cut to the perspective of the owner, Randolph. For the last several years, I barely had any visitors. No customers had turned into a regular. I was sinking deeper into debt. To top it off, a customer today hit me with a barrage of criticisms. I wasn't getting my oil nearly hot enough, wasn't trapping enough moisture in the meat. Oh, and I should have added sweet and sour seasoning before I put in the coating. By the end, the kid told me I had chosen the wrong kind of meat in the first place. But Dragon was a backbone of the restaurant for hundreds of years. That's when the other man that entered the restaurant spoke up. Man, that seriously startled me. But I think this makes things crystal clear, right? Your cooking is lousy enough that that snot-nosed kid can rip it to pieces. This man was constantly pestering me for years now. The man, as always, had an ugly smirk plastered on his face. He was a good-looking man and wasn't stupid. If he walked into the right room, dozens of his subordinates would bow their heads to him. But for some reason, he was dressed up like a thug and sneering at me. Maybe intended it as some sort of disguise. The thuggish looking man spoke up again. Look, I understand you'd want to protect something that's been your family for generations. The thing is though, you don't have a head for business or the power to keep it running. He was right. I was a hopeless businessman. Didn't have the talent as a chef. My cooking was atrocious if it couldn't satisfy a kid. The thuggish looking man spoke up again. That said, you got the real skills in a different field. Everyone has jobs they're better suited for. I replied to him, I suppose so. All right, you win. I'll close down my restaurant. The place was founded 250 years ago, passed down through generations, but I'd failed to preserve its legacy. I just had to carry this disgrace for the rest of my life. On that day, High General Shagal Gargantus of the King Dragon Realm succeeded in recruiting Randolph Mariane. Wait for it. Y'all know where this is going. The Death God. Ranked fourth amongst the seven great powers. Why would he suddenly accept this offer after so many years? Very few would ever know. Rudius nearly died. <laughs> Rudius nearly died. He literally spat in the face of a chef who's the death god. Now, for those that are keeping track here, for those that have those kind of crazy memories, short-term memories, you'll realize that it says the death god ranked fourth amongst the seven great powers. Now the context I was giving earlier was when Rudeus first ran into one of the seven great powers monuments. And what did it say there? The death god was ranked fifth. And Geese claims that he heard that it uses some sort of magic that he's unfamiliar with. He doesn't know what type of magic it is. A magic that automatically changes the rankings on those monuments. So this kind of implies the idea that the death god went up a rank, which is interesting. Because the one that's above him is currently sealed away. So how did he take over that position unless the monument sees that while the demon god is sealed away, the death god got stronger, which is kind of curious. What happened during that travel through the Mills continent getting here? Did the death god suddenly get a little stronger? Maybe now here's kind of an interesting thought here is that for this restaurant that has been passed down for generations, the death god is essentially, supposedly, <laughs> getting dragon meat. If he's one of the seven great powers, you can kind of assume that maybe this guy is getting the dragon meat himself. Like, is he just kind of going up in the mountains, you know, <laughs> wrestling down a dragon, cutting it up, bringing it back, maybe fighting these dragons is getting him stronger. But it's just kind of a curious thing that, yes, technically he's ranked as fourth when just previously, not even, I would assume maybe not even a year ago, he was fifth. Or maybe the demon god is getting weaker. Could be too. But still, very, very, very interesting chapter. I found this to be a massive kick for me. Just this idea of like Rudius being like pretty much Gordon Ramsay yelling about how he made this food. But there is a reasoning behind how furious Rudius gets. He doesn't really kind of equate it and connect it very well here. But the idea here is that he got excited. <laughs> like he smells this and he comes in there and he's like, oh my crap, they have rice. Holy crap, they have karage. Holy crap, this is literally my soul food. This is something that is 
he's not had in so many years, ever since his previous life. It's something that's super nostalgic for him, something that he craves in this new world, and he never sees it anywhere. It's that first point which he finally gets a taste of this food again. Now, in the anime, you see briefly when he's going to the Dragon King realm, you get this little kind of montage, and it shows at some point he's on this carriage and he's eating rice balls. That's the first moment in the anime that we see that. And there's another chapter in this little segment where he does eat rice again. But it's kind of a funny little thing there in the idea that this is finally that point which he finally gets something that's familiar to him. And so, yeah, it to be not good <laughs> frustrates him, gets him super angry. Uh, but yes, I had a lot of theories when I was reading through the segment of the chapters because when I read this, the first season had just ended. And so I didn't have much perspective on the second season at all. So I was still kind of guessing on who this Nanahoshi was. But it's kind of one of those funny moments when I was getting to this point, I'm like, yeah, this is solidifying it for me. This has definitely got to be the one that's walking around with Orsted. They've, they've got to have some sort of connection to Japan, and she's trying to get somebody to cook food that's familiar to her. But there's a possibility that when they were traveling around, and Orsted probably told her, look, the, the death god's over there. If you want to talk to him, you might know something. And she went there and, again, maybe at some point said, hey, try to do this. To It's really a big hit in Japan. It might help you out. Do this, this, and this. And he just wasn't. He wasn't pulling it off. He tried, but he just wasn't pulling it off. And of course, the other big question mark this chapter kind of opens up is, who is this High General Shagal? And what is he What is he planning? <laughs> he literally just recruited the fourth of the seven great powers. And he's bringing him in. He's obviously needing him for something. Like, he's coming here constantly pestering him, join us, come with me. Your skills are useful elsewhere. Now, I don't know what techniques and spells and, and a capability the death god has i mean yes you could throw the assumption out there that he has the touch of death or something like that maybe that's what the death god does maybe he's just a death god because he's just known for killing a lot don't have any answers for that currently but there's a reason why this guy is here there's a reason why shagal's here and it makes me believe that the dra the, the king dragon realm is planning something here soon like they're planning on moving here soon they're recruiting him because they have a fight that they're coming up to. So it makes me believe that at this point right here, we're already hinting at the idea that maybe the possibility that the Dragon King realm, they might be wanting to step on some toes and start some fights. Maybe Asra, maybe the holy country of Millis. Don't know. It is funny to note that Eris in this chapter is, yes, very confused by the reaction that Rudius has. And a lot of that has to do with this whole period of time leading up to here. Rudius didn't eat much. He's a very picky eater. And during this entire journey, he hasn't really been eating much. Yeah, when we know a lot when he was in the Demon Continent, he hated the food there. <laughs> like, the meat was nasty. Everything that people claim was really good, he's like, no, this is disgusting. This is nasty. So this is the first time in which Edda starts to take note that, yeah, we got to the King, and Dra the King Dragon Realm, and suddenly he's eating a lot more. And that's because he's seeing a lot of familiar foods. Again, like I said, in the anime adaptation, you'll see where he's eating rice balls and stuff. He's finally in an area that seems like it has food that he's familiar with, and he wants to try it all. And this will happen throughout his entire journey through the, the King Dragon Realm. Is he constantly stopping to places and going, oh crap, let's see if they, they see if they pull it off. Nope, they didn't pull it off. <laughs> oh, this one, nope, they didn't pull it off. They're trying, but they're not quite there yet. It's just a really funny little moment. But yes, very, very interesting chapter. I hope you guys enjoyed this little skip chapter, skip content video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button down below and comment. Let me know what you think of this whole this whole chapter. Is it's this pretty cool little insight? Are you interested to see more of the Death God? It's kind of one of those chapters where, like I said earlier, I I understand why it's not important to have been adapted because this is really one of those cases where because the anime is so centered on Rudius, it's such his focus. And the broader story in the world and everything like that is important to Rudius and the story and the overall story of Mushoku Tensei. But for the anime, it's so focused on Rudius that it makes sense that something like this wasn't really noted. Because, honestly, from his perspective, nothing transpired here. Yes, he got to try really bad karage. Yes, he found rice. But again, that little montage shows that he found rice. This isn't that important to the overall story yet. I don't even know. Um, eventually, it could be really important, but it's not as if later on, I mean, it could happen. And it's not as if later on, suddenly, out of nowhere, this guy shows up in front of Bruce and says, oh, you're that guy that made fun of my karage. I'm taking you out. <laughs> then I'll say, yeah, that was kind of important, kind of bad they skipped that. Uh, but even then, it could be one of those cases where it just goes, huh? And then he thinks, and suddenly you see the shot where he's in the restaurant, and he's yelling at this guy about his food, and it's like, oh, there you go. It's not that big of a deal. But it's fun stuff, and it's, it's interesting stuff to kind of give a broader... Uh, world building for this world but anyhow that all said 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, hit that like button down below, comment, let me know what you think of this chapter. Additionally, if you're new to the channel, make sure that subscribe button scale my content. I do news reviews, first impressions, top list if it's animates pretty much here. Additionally, every week I'm trying to do a deep dive, skip content video for Mushoku Tensei. So if you're an anime only and you want to get a little more deeper dive into the novel series without skipping on beyond what the anime has adapted, definitely stick around. Additionally, if you like this content and you want to support the channel more, I have a Patreon link, tips link, super thanks, membership button down below. Greatly appreciate it, but it does. And y'all take care.